Stardew Valley is a very open-ended game. There aren't really any goals or a set story to follow until you finish the game. There's basically only one goal in the game and it's not even that much of a goal. In your third year, your grandfather will come back as a ghost and evaluate your progress on your farm. If you did a good job, and got a certain amount of points, you will be given a special magical statue that will produce iridium ore every single day. This goal is not that hard to achieve because it isn't actually time locked. If you did not receive enough points by your third year, you can place a diamond on your grandfather's altar and then he will re-evaluate your farm. This means that the only real goal in Stardew Valley is to just basically play the game and then get a rating based on a bunch of random factors. But what do you do after that? Well, when you do get a good evaluation from your grandfather, then the game is technically finished, right? Luckily for us, Stardew Valley is not really a game that ends like that. There is a ton to do after this point in the game and that is exactly what I will go over with in this video. Alright, let's get started with money making. I'm quite sure you were expecting this one, but making money in Stardew Valley is actually a ton of fun. And you won't just be making money for no reason, because there are a ton of endgame items and buildings that will cost you millions and millions of gold. The obelisks will cost you about 1 million gold each, the return scepter costs about 2 million gold, and the famous golden clock will set you back a very impressive 10 million gold. So yes, there are definitely a few good reasons to make a ton of gold in Story Valley. Even if these expensive items did not exist and if there was no real reason to make lots of gold, I would still enjoy the process of making gold in Story Valley. I just find it really enjoyable to min-max my farm, set up efficient processes and mechanisms that create huge sums of money. I also like to challenge myself and see how deep I can get in the skull cavern on a single day. Since at this point in the game, we should already have all of the resources we need. I usually don't spare any expense as my goal is to reach the true depth of the skull cavern. For me, it's a lot of fun and really not that possible earlier in the game. Now, this might be a controversial opinion, but I think the true endgame of Sturdy Valley is decorating and glamour. Once you have every item and building in the game and more money than you know what to do with, this is where the true endgame actually starts. I recently made a video with some tips and tricks to decorating a farm. And that farm took me an incredible amount of time to design. If you want to, you can create an incredibly intricate farm and this will probably take a lot of time with plenty of trial and error redesigns and micro changes until your farm looks absolutely perfect. Designing a farm from the ground up with either pure aesthetic or efficiency in mind and then sharing it and causing extreme envy among your friends. That is the true endgame of Stardew Valley. On top of designing your perfect farm, there are about 350 different clothing items in the game and most of them can be dyed. Trying them all on until you find the perfect outfit for your character and theme can take a while but it's definitely worth it. If you are the type of person that needs a set defined goal that you can track then you are in luck because you can just try and get 100% true perfection. You can track your current perfection percentage by checking out this computer in Mr. Key's Walnut Room. To get perfect percentage to 100% you will need to sell at least one of every type of crop and forageable in the game but you should probably just ship 15 instead for the polyculture achievement you'll also need to build four of the obelisks and buy the golden clock this will cost you a total of 13 million gold you will also need to complete all of the monster eradication goals at the adventurers guild this is much easier if you bring some monster mask with you as that will increase the amount of enemies that spawn this is an incredibly hard one but you will need to reach maximum hearts with everyone in town this is already a mouthful but we are not quite done yet you also need to reach level Level 10 and every skill. Luckily for us, this is easy to achieve, but you'll also have to find every star drop in the game. To find all of the star drops, you will need to catch 
every fish, complete the community center, and get married. So this one is actually much harder than it initially appears to be. You will also need to cook every recipe in the game. If you missed a recipe, it might take quite a while to learn the one you missed. You will also need to craft one of every craftable item in the game. And lastly, you just need to find all of the 130 golden walnuts on Ginger Island. After you have completed all of that, you will get a magical special statue. The statue of true perfection. Now this statue has a great and interesting use as it will produce a prismatic shard for you every single day. With this statue, you will never have to worry about farming for these things ever again. Completing all of these things will take quite a while and I should probably make a dedicated video on this one day. There are actually a bunch of achievements that are not required to get 100% perfection. So if you are the true ultimate completionist, then you can try and get 100% completion in this game. This means completing every single achievement in the game. Some of these achievements are extremely rare, like the Fictus Challenge that tasks you with beating the journey of the Pirate King without dying. You can also try and complete every Every single one of Musuki's special order requests. Some of these are actually really difficult and they will definitely challenge you, but in a good way. Alright, this one might seem crazy, but, but hear me out. You could start a brand new farm on a new farm layout. Personally, I love starting a new playthrough and using what I learned in previous playthroughs just to achieve things faster and generally set up my farm to succeed right from the beginning. You would be quite surprised at how different you can play the game on your second playthrough or even your third playthrough. You can also experiment with some of the different farm layouts. The beach farm is an excellent candidate for a new playthrough because you can't place many sprinklers on that farm and you will have to play the game quite differently than you are used to. The Riverlands is another interesting farm layout that will definitely prove to be challenging as it is the smallest farm layout in the game and the structure of this farm is very random and complex. I still haven't figured out the Riverlands myself yet. And those are some of the endgame things that you can do in Stardew Valley. Naturally, there are still tons of other things that you can do, like min-maxing your boat so that you can truly conquer the Skull Cavern, or you can try speedrunning. But what are some of the things you like to do in the endgame of Stardew Valley? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. I release a new Stardew Valley video every two days. But for now, I will see you in the next video.